Bitcoin has been consolidating now for 20 straight days within a huge horizontal channel underneath the 28 to 30,000 major yearly resistors. This analysis is one you cannot miss. Let's go ahead and dive in. Okay guys, thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. We're here to discuss Bitcoin and there is a lot to talk about today, guys. Bitcoin is preparing for the next move and I really am urging this. This is not the time to be complacent and be relaxed. You have to be paying attention while price is at major resistance. Bitcoin is coming up to about 21 days now of horizontal consolidation just underneath that $28,000 to $30,000 range. We're kind of pushing into it slightly, dropping below it over and over. What we have developed on the smaller time frame is a quite a large horizontal channel. This channel is now about 21 days long. We're seeing about a 7% range and we've developed some really strong triggers. Triggers being price points of which when broken, the price will make directional moves. And we're gonna be discussing this on a lot of detail today, talking about the next move of Bitcoin and where Bitcoin could go upon actually executing these triggers for the upside and the downside. We're also gonna take a look at the daily chart, discuss the volume, momentum, technical indicators, price action, targets, and so much more. And of course, go over all the market data and traditional markets. Before we get into it, smash that like button, hit that comment button, and of course, subscribe to the channel. We do the most comprehensive, in-depth, technical analysis you'll find on YouTube. We focus on the price action, the structure, the data, and so much more, guys. You can also find us on Telegram. That is going to be the second link down below. You'll get access to news events, such as this. Chart information, analysis, updates, videos, educational posts and so much more if you're interested in supporting the channel you can sign up to bitget we're going to have an actual giveaway on bitget pretty soon so do sign up to bitget as you're going to have to be required to sign up actually to be entering a giveaway more information comes in a month and you'll get 15 percent off your trading fees and of course if you're interested in vip you can go in and contact me to get access to vip you get access to a main vip channel and our group chat in fact for the month, guys, we have been on an absolute roll. We've taken 10 wins or 11, 11 trades now in VIP. I've actually had 11 wins in VIP. All wins so far. Huge profits. You can see every single trade we post, guys, comes with exact entries, targets, stop losses. There, for example, is one. Here is another. Exa entries, targets, stop losses. Go ahead for more information. Let's get into a video, guys, starting off with the market data. Currently, for the month, Bitcoin is down 1.8%. We're now seven days in, so we're nearly a full week in. We haven't really seen a lot of price action again. We're not expecting a lot of price action until we start to see a break of the current range. And I do not expect this range to break to the upside or the downside until we start to see some of our economic data come out. And we'll go ahead back to this channel over here, which we posted in here. As you can see, we have NFP on the 7th. We have, which is actually today, tonight, we have unemployment rates on the 7th, which is tonight. We have inflation in about four or five days. We have a year on year and CPI then. And of course, we have PPI on the 13th. And we also have our C, uh, F1C minutes meeting on the 13th. So some of these economic triggers could be the triggers for the next move of Bitcoin. So we are watching these key dates to see if we're going to have a shift in the overall systematic risk in the market, or at least a perceived systematic risk in the market, which could drive the price action into a new direction. These are going to be massive this month, guys, as Bitcoin is again at a major, major yearly resistance. And if we do have a shift in the perceived systematic risk in the market, we could see a shift in either direction. And again, we'll be discussing that today. Moving on from there, guys, we can see overall volume is down 20% to 64 billion. And of course, 24 hour liquidations are following that down 37%. The 30 day volatility index is showing 3.43, which is slowly dropping. Hold that thought, we'll come back to that one, okay? And the 60 day volatility index has gained 3.13. You can see very slightly dropping. It's plateauing, but it is more or less slightly dropping. Plateauing slash dropping is an indication that momentum, volume, liquidity, and of course speed is dropping in the price section. When we start to see momentum, okay, liquidity, volume, and volatility drop, okay, which they are dropping, while the price is in an uptrend at resistance, that indicates weakness in price action or translated to weakness in the trend. A weak trend and an uptrend 
at a resistance increases the probability of a breakdown. It doesn't confirm it. There's no confirmation yet. We'll talk about when we'll see confirmation. We have not seen confirmation of a rejection. We have not seen confirmation of a breakdown yet. We'll talk about what we'll need to see for that to occur. But what it suggests, it suggests the probability of a breakdown is higher than the probability of a break up. Now there are triggers on the price action that will shift the probabilities. Again, we'll discuss that today. And there are economic news events, such as the ones we mentioned before, which can invalidate the bearish probabilities and invalidate, or sorry, should I say, add statistical probabilities towards moves upwards. Again, we'll discuss all of this in today's video. So let's go ahead guys and talk about the traditional markets and then we'll get into the Bitcoin charts. The DXY has been is struggling a bit guys. We've seen a few breaks up. We saw a pretty strong break up over here a few days ago. Rejection back towards this range. Again, we're holding this horizontal support. We've seen a break up again, another rejection, retesting a downward trending support line. Again guys, not too much movement. We, we really don't expect too much to happen here. But we do have NFP coming out tonight and we have CPI in about four or five days. These events are going to significantly shift the direction of the dollar. CPI is forecasted to come in lower. NFP is forecasted to come in more bullish. And if they do come in more bullish or uh, at least provide a sentiment that the economy is starting to become healthier and interest rates will potentially come down even more, that could result in the DXY dropping further and allowing the asset prices to rally. Now this could be one of the, in, one of the validations where Bitcoin could basically invalidate the bearish structures that are forming and the bearish probabilities and continue upwards. Again, economic data can shift price action irregardless of how the technicals are looking or what the prior strength is suggesting. Moving on, we can see S&P 500 has bounced from our lower support zone on a smaller time frame. Again, we aren't really expecting a macro shift until this is broken. We do have pretty strong resistance here as we have a rising channel forming and we have a strong horizontal neckline resistance here. Again, looking for a maximal target up over here before a correction or a correction at any of these lower supports. Again, for us to see any sort of macro higher time flip in the trend, we need to be breaking over this local high. Breaking above here will be incredibly bullish and put the S&P 500 back into a yearly or at least monthly long trend. Again, we have been bullish ever since here, but we have been understanding that we are not macro bullish yet until this entire bearish structure has been flipped at the moment, we are in a reversal from it, but it gets flipped above this local high. Keep that in mind. Dow Jones, a very similar position, guys. We do need to be breaking above some of these local highs over here to see any sort of continuation upwards. It is a little bit slower. It doesn't have as much volatility as S&P 500. So we are looking for, again, these local highs to flip for a continuation upwards. Until then, any local high can be acting as a rejection point towards this down dotted trend line. Again, the economic data that will come out could definitely push the market in a direction. Let's go ahead and talk about Bitcoin, guys, because there is so much to talk about. And first and foremost, we're going to go ahead and start on the smaller time frame today and build it up to the higher time frame. I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss my favorite exchange, BitGet. If you're looking for a safe, honest, reliable, and accurate exchange, look no further than BitGet. You can sign up by the link in the description to support the channel and get access to three exclusive perks. That being up to 5,005 US dollars in trading rewards, up to 15% discount on your trading fees, and exclusive access to our MegaWell promotion campaigns that we run every few months. Alongside that guys, BitGet is a non-KYC exchange, meaning you do not have to KYC, it is completely optional. BitGet also has a protection fund that secures user assets against external hacks and threats in the space. Alongside that guys, BitGet offers up to 125x leverage on futures with extensive amount of trading pairs and liquidity on the market. I highly recommend signing to BitGet. It is the exchange I've been using for over a year and a half now, including all of our members. If you're interested in signing up, trading there and supporting the channel, you can do so with the link in the description. Thanks for listening. So 30,000 to 28,000 is a major, major horizontal resistance. It's the yearly long horizontal resistance and we'll talk about it and elaborate on it in just a moment. But do keep in mind that 30,000, 28,000 is a yearly long resistance. In fact, it is the yearly trigger point for a macro continuation upwards. And again, 
We have been in a higher time frame uptrend for quite some time. We have been in a higher time frame uptrend ever since we broke out of a this higher time frame falling wedge structure, which was a bullish reversal structure out from the bear market. Okay, we actually flipped bullish on the higher time frames right over here. But this is a weekly trend, right? A weekly trend and a monthly uptrend are two different things. We need to see higher time frame confirmation for higher time frame trends. So for us to see a monthly uptrend now that we should develop into a yearly uptrend, quote unquote bull market, we do need to see a yearly resistance flip and that yearly resistance is 28 to 30,000. So what could result in Bitcoin pushing up again to retest 30,000 and have another crack at it? Well, we have to look at the smaller time frame as the smaller time frame influences the immediate direction and immediate inter direction can influence the higher time frame direction if occurrences happen more frequently on the smaller time frame. For example, if momentum is continuously falling on the smaller time frame, eventually that is going to translate to the higher time frame, and then the higher time frame is going to start looking like it is dropping in momentum, and that could translate and translate and translate. It's a domino effect, okay? So when you're looking for macro reversals in price action, particularly at high time frame points of confluence, such as resistances and supports, you do have to actually look at the smaller time frame to see how the trend is developing, to see how the price action is developing. Because if you're relying on lagging indicators after such long explosive moves upwards, of course these indicators are going to be exceptionally bullish. We're going to see vol very volatile moves up, very strong moves up. The higher time frame indicators look as if those indicators are suggesting continuations, while the smaller time frame indicators can be giving us warning signs of potential reversals, which would then develop on the higher time frames. Exactly as we said at 64,000, guys, we said all of the indicators. I actually flipped bearish over here back in November, but if you've been watching the channel, you would know I was bullish the entire time. We said higher time frame indicators are incredibly bullish right now because we saw an explosive move, but the smaller time frame is suggesting a strong reversal is incoming. We actually predicted a move to 20,000. We saw that. At 18,000, we said the same thing, guys. Our higher time frame move averages are suggesting we're going to go to 12,000, we're going to go to 10,000, we could potentially even go up, even lower. But our lower time frame indicators on economic data was suggesting that we're going to see a healthy reversal incoming soon. And we did get confirmation of that from a falling web structure. However, I am digressing. So let's go back to the smaller time frame. What would it take for Bitcoin to see a continuation upwards? We need to see a four hour close above this higher time frame bullish trigger. For a continuation downward, we need to see a four hour close below the high time frame bearish trigger. How can we validate that? Well, if we look at the prior price action, look at points of liquidity on the chart, we kind of map out a liquidity range on the smaller time frame. We can use a VIPV to kind of help us uh, determine where these points of triggers in momentum will occur. And we can see right over here, as per the VIPV, when we get above and below these peaks, we will see liquidity significantly drop off. And we see us into low liquidity zones. Volatility doesn't need to be as high. Volume doesn't need to be as high for price action speed to increase. If there's less resistance, it requires less volume and volatility for the price to move through than if we're in periods of higher resistance, okay? Higher historical orders equals more orders equals more full order books equal equals more money needs to be moved to move the price. Okay, there is higher and higher amounts of resistance. And as you can see above this level, if we break above here in a four hour, we enter a very low liquidity zone. Okay, we can zoom out to see this, but I'm going to show you on a smaller time frame. You're probably thinking, well, of course there's none here, but it's in a visible range volume profile. And we can see there's literally nothing over here, and therefore it's going to be very, very low. But we'll come back to that. But if we look at a smaller time frame, guys, with a downside, we do have a visible range here. We can see that even within this range, there is very, very little volume. Therefore, a drop below this level, we should see volatility and volume increase as opposed to what we have seen in this range, resulting in a strong correction towards our next support at 25.2K to 24.4K. Again, the higher time frame bearish trigger will be confirmed below the support line as the higher time frame bullish trigger will be confirmed for a continuation up to 30 above that higher time frame trigger on the smaller time frame. We can see on the VIPV, even over here, guys, if we zoom out, we can see that we do have a very, very strong pivot from higher resistance to lower resistance throughout the remaining area between 28.8 to 30,000. This resistance range is broken up into two lots. We have 
lower resistance here, we have higher resistance here. Within resistor zones, resistance is not equally distributed between the two points, okay? An unequal distribution of resistance within resistor zones, okay? There are periods or price ranges where the price can move easier through and periods where it can move harder through. So let's go back to the smaller time frame and do a quick TA and then we'll move on guys to the higher time frame charts and talk about how these moves, okay? How these moves, whether it be down over here, okay, or whether it be up over here, could influence the macro price action, because that's what's really important. So before we do that, let's talk about the TA and how the price action is looking right now. So as you can see, I have labeled the red zones as resistances and the green zones as support. At the moment, we have bounced on support a few times over here, so it's looking pretty decent. If we do a technical analysis really quick on a four hour and break it down, what we can see on our, uh, we'll bring up our Marcus over A and Gorzin channel, we can see that the price action currently is sitting underneath the 50 EMA, okay, and the midline of the Gorzin channel. This is signifying overall weakness in the trend. We have seen when we've dropped below this level before, we have seen glimmers of weakness. We have seen glimmers of weakness. We haven't really held below this level, okay? The last time we were underneath this level was all the way back in March 2023. We've pretty much been above this level on the four hour chart for quite some time. However, on the four hour chart, we are now starting to drop below. And these are signals, these are signs of weakness in the trend, which is developing. Now, this is actually surprisingly normal. The reason being, Moving averages are all based on the average price of movement through a specific time frame, okay? It could be a 200, a 50, a 20, whatever. It doesn't matter what time frame you're using, the time frame related to the moving average. If we have, say we have a 30 period moving average, and this is 30 days, and within the first 10 periods, we have significant volatility. And within the next 10 periods, we have significantly reduced volatility. What do you think happens to the moving average? Well, the moving average starts very, very volatile and it starts to curve. That curvature doesn't necessarily reflect that the price is going to crash, but it signifies weakness in relation to how it was suggesting prior, okay? Remember, it is all in relation. So technical indicators, specifically moving average based technical indicators are not going to tell you where the price is going, but they're gonna tell you the strength of the trend. We can use that information in determining the direction or at least to determine the probabilities of direction when we do our analysis. So this alone isn't strong enough to suggest, yes, the price is gonna crash the sort of lower 50 and the midline, but it is suggesting we are starting to see weakness in this period in comparison to the prior price action in the same range, which could result in a continuation downwards, or at least if we do see a continuation downwards, there's a higher probability that it will continue to lower supports rather than just find support. We are also under the POC, so we do have quite strong resistance forming above us, and we can see we do have that resistance over here. So I would say the four hour is slightly more bearish, but we do need to break it down to a smaller time frame even now. Let's go to a 30 minute chart. On the 30 minute chart, guys, we can see what is happening from a structural standpoint? We have our downtrending resistance over here. We do have this neckline. So this and this horizontal neckline. I would say guys, for a continuation back up to this range, we're going to need to see a break over about 28,200. We need to clear this local high and clear this resistance. Until then, we are gonna be ping-ponging between these smaller time frame resistance and supports. Again, the trigger moves will occur above 28.2 and below 27.888. A move toward the downside will occur as a breakdown of this range, and a move towards the upside will occur on a break up from this range. Let's get back into higher time frame. So, why is 30,000 so important, and where could we go if we break above? Slash, why is 20? Uh, 8,000, so, so 27,200, which is the lower range of this trigger, okay? Remember, lower range, 20, 27,200, 26,800. Why is that so important for a move downward? So really quickly, if we look at that four hour chart one more time, and we look at the downside, if we see the VRPV, we can see a significant drop off. So it does suggest if we drop those level, we will see the continuation downwards. That next support is in fact, actually the 256 day, or it's a 265 day, something like that, 200 plus day, support that we retested once and twice. We finally broke through. So this is going to be a very strong neckline of support for the higher time frame continuation upwards. This will be the first point 
again, represented by the VRPV, of major support if a correction occurs at this level. We are looking for a continuation here, primarily and first and foremost, okay? If we do see a break over 30,000, we need to see a monthly candle close above 30,000 for a confirmation. Even if we see a close above 30,000, we are not going to just enter a explosive bull market. It is going to take time for the price action to climb higher. The reason being, if we look at the price action and we look at the VRPV, guys, look at the VRPV. It is rising, okay? The VRPV rises as we push past 30,000, indicating the move upwards is going to take more and more and more money and it's going to be slower and slower as we enter more and more resistance as we move towards our next resistance zone of 40,000. Again, the four-year cycle doesn't suggest a bull run is going to kick off until April 2024. So we have time. We need to break above this dotted trend line, 48,000, and 20, uh, 20 of April 2024 to see a bull run trigger. But that doesn't mean we can't climb upwards. Like I've been saying, we've said already, we're going to see a significant rally in price. We saw 300% before that point in the last cycle. We saw 232% in the prior cycle. And this cycle, we could potentially see around 100 to 200% before a bull run starts. So it doesn't mean the price won't rally. But what I'm trying to say, if you're expecting the price to break over 30,000 and all of a sudden go to 40,000 within a week, you are sorely mistaken. According to the data, it will not happen. Let's go back to this time frame, guys. Now, the higher time frame is not looking amazing on the daily. The weekly is looking better. The monthly, of course, is looking fantastic as we have seen a lot of volatility into the market within the last month. But like I said, we need to look at smaller time frames when at resistances. Since we are at a yearly resistance, a daily time frame, a weekly time frame is a good one to be looking at for rejections. A smaller time frame is a great one to be looking for triggers of those rejections. What will trigger a continuation? But the higher time frames of the daily and weekly will be a good one to look at for actual rejections occurring. So what are we looking at over here? We're looking at a rising price. We're looking at decreasing momentum as a quarter to the RSI. The RSI is dropping, okay? The market side of B is dropping and the MACD is starting to cross over. We are seeing bearish divergences print on this higher time frame. It suggests that momentum is decreasing. Now, what is momentum comprised of? How do we formulate momentum? Speed, velocity, okay? These are one of the main ones. Speed, and velocity, and volume make up momentum. So if momentum is falling, what does it mean speed, velocity, and volume are doing? Well, it means they're falling too. Now we know if volume is dropping, okay, we know volume and liquidity is dried together. So if volume is dropping, we can also say liquidity is falling. So now we know that momentum dropping represents a drop in um, speed, velocity, and volume, okay, as well as volatility and liquidity. That suggests that the price action is weakening. Remember, we don't even need to look at these indicators. We can delete them. We don't need to look at zones. We don't need to look at anything. All we can look at is the price action itself and we can derive the narrative, what we just formulated from the, from the technical indicators, from the price action itself. When you understand how price action works, you don't need to use a variety of different technical indicators. These are just visual representations of the price action. These are guides. These are visual representations of the price action that help you formulate and depict a narrative. But when you know how to drag a narrative out of price action, you can position yourself with the probabilities regardless of what you're looking at, okay? It is all linked together. Technical indicators don't move price. Price determine technical indicators. A technical indicator is a mathematical formulation based on price action. Therefore, the technical indicator is suggesting something. It's not the technical indicator suggesting the price is going to move. The price action is suggesting the price is going to move based on the data, and the data is reflected as a technical indicator. You have to understand that price action is significantly more important than technical indicators. Technical indicators do not trigger moves. I see a lot of people saying, death cross incoming, the price is going down. No, the death cross doesn't make the price go down. The price goes down, which results in the death cross happening. It's very much backwards okay we have to think about it realistically and you have to understand technical analysis a lot of people simply do not know what they don't even know and that makes it very difficult because a lot of people think they understand price action they understand ta and then they go ahead and say ta doesn't work you're just making prophecies you're just guessing when in fact i'm doing the complete opposite of that there is no guesswork there is no prophecies. There is only pure raw data. This is what the data is suggesting. These are the validation points. This is the data to support those claims. And this is the price action. Now the price action is occurring because of social 
economic and political decisions. We know that price action is driven by those decisions. Price action is reflected by momentum, all that kind of stuff before. If we look at those leading indicators to what causes price action to move, we can then assign probabilities to the direction of the price action. Keep it simple, guys. Keep it objective. So looking at this chart over here, what do we see? Again, decreasing momentum. If we draw our trend lines, we see a rising trend line. Now here is where it gets very interesting. If we draw a base trend line from here and across, we see an expanding wedge. Now this is actually something I noticed yesterday with a huge, huge fake up to down, downside, which I'm actually quite concerned about guys. Because if we see a correction to 25.2 to 24.4, I think we may just see a liquidity, a liquidity grab just below that point towards the trend line. So if we start losing at 27.2 to 26K range, that trigger point over here, and we come on down, guys, I'd be looking for a correction toward this support line for the worst case scenario, where we then would either bounce and continue upwards, or of course, reject and continue downwards. We'll talk about that another day. Again, this is a horizontal channel, guys, so we can break upwards, and to break up targets, it's gonna be 30,000, okay? or anywhere along this trigger point or this trend line. Again, like I said, for a confirmed breakout, we need to see the price action break above 30,000, but of course, a momentum shift upwards, so we need the RSI to break up as well. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna leave the video there. If you've got any questions, leave them down below. Subscribe to the channel, guys. Support me by joining BitGet, trading on BitGet. is where I trade, get 15% of your trading fees. Of course, join up our VIP for daily trading signals and so much more. Thanks for listening. I hope you found some value from this video. Um, and go ahead and sub to Crypto Academy if you wanna learn how I trade and learn to trade like me, watching how I show you how everything, technical indicators, candlesticks, market structures, patterns. We teach you the knowledge you need from the start the foundations to become a successful, profitable, profitable and unemotional trader, guys. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.